Hope everybody is having a good day, August 23rd, 2024. And I'm going to talk again today about this church experience and why I'm done with church and won't be back anymore. And we're going to cover some more detail about egging this on. So, I got excommunicated from a Seventh-day Adventist back in 2011 because I was at a dam 12 miles away from my home catfishing and the church drove all the way up there tried to get me to stop fishing and when I wouldn't they excommunicated me from the church and this was one incident I won't forget and I had pastors from other churches coming to my own home telling me what color to paint the walls in my own house, how to arrange the furniture in the rooms of my own home, and the pastors were trying to tell me who would move in with me, when they would move in, and who would not move in with me. They were trying to control me. And when I said no to that, I got shunned. There was one incident where there was a relationship that went awry and things went bad. You know, a long-term relationship went awry. So it came to be, I decided to get out of that relationship. I chose to just leave things alone since things weren't working. And I got out of it. And these parties years ago were still coming to my house out of the blue to yell at me, blaming me, egging things on when I had moved on, forgiven everything and just let it go. And they came to my property to yell at me and to blame me for all of it and for all of these problems when I had no contact with the parties henceforth. They, the church, came to my home to start stuff and they kept on egging it on with me. This was long after I severed the ties several times before. And this was an occasion. So another recent occasion, we're talking in the last two weeks of August 2024, arose another church occasion with the same party. As how recent, you know that that we're talking about here. And after church was over, this pastor said after the rest of the congregation had left, and he said this statement, I was lectured and blamed 100%. I had caused all of the problems for this individual in, in church. I was then lectured hardcore that I was 100% in the wrong for being the sole cause of her heartbreak or heartache. You know, his or her, you know, a different party, several. And for these people, me letting a relationship go, I was sternly told I better repent of my bitterness and my hardened heart and my anger. And they kept gaslighting me, trying to make me feel guilty for my actions to leave a relationship. So the pastor, when I said and confronted him, I said, this is over. The pastor jumped up and said, Chad, you're a liar. That is not from the God of creation. I see that snicker on your face. You're a liar, Chad. No, it's not over with that relationship. So then I blew up and I said in anger, I'm tired of being gaslit. I'll just quit God, I'll quit Torah, and I will just go to hell. Well, it is windy today. So I told the pastor that in the heat of the moment and frustration, and the pastor then said, Chad, sit down, you're not leaving here so fast. Don't turn your back on God as if trying to use leveraging me. I gotta make sure Chad is okay and wouldn't let me leave right then. I was told I needed to repent and restore such things and relationships. 
I was 100% wrong for being angry and frustrated, wishing to just leave peacefully and leave things alone. And plus this pastor told me in this other party, told the other party on her side, the pastor told me this, this hardcore lecture and he had been on the other person accusing them of making excuses to not confront me about restoring the relationship and telling them that they were in sin for not coming to my home to talk to me about this thing when I had said it's over and I left things alone after another confrontation that occurred back in March of 2024. And I had stayed out of it, you know, and everything, just with everything, you know, the church was trying to egg it on when I had decided to leave it alone. And I had even seen the other party and I had not been mean or ugly or vindictive in any way when I had seen the other party even two months ago. So I was hardcore lectured, I better forgive this, and I was to blame for all of their problems, and that I was on a pity party myself making excuses when I told a lie that I was autistic and the pastor said, Chad, you're just too negative. You're not focused on God enough. You're just too negative you know, making excuses, and he t and basically it was pointed to, I call God a liar, basically, when Psalm 139 I was confronted with said I'm wonderfully made, and after what I went through, you know, I, I honestly doubted, and you know, all of this talk blaming me for making all these fake excuses on my behalf. So when I needed to talk about something in life or express things, affairs that were going on, it would always be skewed instantly to their filters, their repertoire, and they're always right, and Chad was 100% wrong. And I had since 2015 100 dreams that were warnings to steer clear of certain things with that mess. I had obeyed them, but you know, they're the ones that would not let me leave it alone and they would not let, let it go, you know, off of me. So then when I snapped or went off or, or, you know, snapped back or acted out or got out of line speaking negative about how I was tired of all this bullshit that I kept then being blamed for and gaslit for, told that I was in the wrong constantly and going against God in my anger and bitterness and resentment you know, I have to say, they kept stonewalling me and would never let me talk about anything I needed to talk about. They kept stonewalling me, stonewalling me, stonewalling me. So then my phone had an issue. My phone had an issue and there were some issues going on and I was lectured, you know, on that. I wouldn't return the texts and all of that when my phone was out so you know i was blamed it was on me and i know honestly my phone was out and didn't realize it was out you know at the time so that's another thing so at a pentecostal church this is a different church at a pentecostal church when i was there this pastor in front of a congregation of 30 people called me up to the front and he went, Oh, Chad, when you feel that hell far, it'll be too late, Chad. Oh, when you feel that hell for listening to rock and country music, you know, in your own home. Oh, when you feel that far, it's going to be too late. You're going to wish you had repented. And, you know, things of that nature. That went on in 20 back in the 2015 yeah it was on back there but so like three weeks ago this other pastor had this issue where they were in the hospital and then he said 
Oh, God was good when he allowed Satan to have me in the chambers. And he had me in the chambers of hell. And oh, God was good when he used that, you know, to teach me all this stuff. And God wanted me in the chambers and all of that kind of stuff. And this went on like three or four weeks ago. And... There had been an occurrence where this pastor dealt with his ex-wife. Five times the thing had fallen through and he wouldn't leave it alone. So then when he went to the chambers, you know, in this hospital stay that was 10 days, bad things happened. And then he said, oh, God had me right where he wanted me to be, you know, with this with this girl and this bad relationship and stuff and and you know that was this and y'all I'm done with church and I'm telling you it's over for the record I talked to two psychiatrists about this and they said that that kind of environment is unhealthy for me and not good for my mental state that these pastors keep saying I'm on a pity party as false and I'm making excuses and I'm making it up because God says that mental illness doesn't exist and that I'm calling him a liar according to Psalm 139 being wonderfully made. He's, you know, lecturing me that that mental illness doesn't exist and that I'm crazy and all of that and everybody just kept stonewalling me stonewalling me stonewalling me long term saying oh chad we're not going to talk negative today no we're not going to talk negative today oh i'm gonna turn around and take you home you know if you're gonna talk negative today and oh we're not gonna do that and you know one party in this church was doing that and Y'all, I'm sick of it, and I'm going to say F this system again at the end of part two. I'm tired of it. 